Hello friends, this video on Water a Precious Resource Part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have spoken about various forms of water, now we will talk about groundwater in more detail because I have been telling you right that other than the reservoirs like rivers, ponds, lakes and rainfall, groundwater is another very important source of water where we find a lot of water. So let's talk more about groundwater. Now, first of all, it sounds surprising sometimes to know that water is present even under the ground. Because when you talk about rivers or lakes or oceans, we can actually see water being present there. But when you talk about under the ground, we can't see any water below the ground. All we see is the soil on the ground. We cannot see what's there below it. Now, for that purpose, what you can do is just try to dig deep a hole under the ground. And you will see as you keep digging, maybe immediately you will not find any water but as you continue digging, after some time you will be able to find some water present there. So which proves that water is present under the ground. In fact, if you have observed ever that whenever it rains, what happens to the water which falls on, which falls on the ground, especially on the soil. So water doesn't accumulate there. Rain water which falls on the ground, it passes through the soil particles and it goes deep down. So now whenever it rains, the water will just penetrate through the soil particles and it will reach deep down. So that's how the ground water is getting collected below the ground. Now how do you know that this water is actually passing through this? So what you can do is immediately after a heavy rainfall or not even heavy rainfall, even after a mild rainfall, just take some sand. A handful of sand and what do you see that the sand is moist why is it moist due to the presence of water so basically that water which fell on the soil it actually entered deep inside it seeped inside through the spaces between the soil particles and that's how the the water actually reaches deep below and finally it fills all the spaces between the rocks because as you go down now we have discussed in the lesson on soil the various layers of soil right so we know that at the bottom you have have the layer of rocks where you have big rock particles and in between you also have big spaces so all those spaces between the rocks are all filled with water so that's how even below the ground you have good reservoirs of water and this forms the ground water now a very simple example which you might have observed in your garden itself when you water the plant what happens the water which we put here it seeps inside the soil and that that is what which makes the soil moist so water from the soil again is then absorbed by the plants through its roots so presence of water or moisture in the soil is a proof or is an evidence of the presence of ground water so that's that tells us that yes water is present below the ground now when we talk about groundwater, it becomes very important to talk about water table. So water table decides how deep under the ground do we find water. Now as I mentioned some time back that if you start digging the soil, maybe immediately you will not find water. You will actually need to dig quite a deep, only then you will be able to find water. That's because uh, there is a certain depth at which water exists so water doesn't exist immediately on the towards the surface of the ground or the towards the surface of the soil but it is present quite deep inside now how much deep you will actually see presence of water that is dependent on water table so water table can be defined as the level below the ground beyond which ground is saturated with sufficient water so basically as i said now, as we continue to dig deeper under the ground, we will reach a level where all the spaces between the rocks are filled with sufficient water. So beyond this level, there is good amount of water which is present under the ground. So this is the level from where water table starts. So if you look at this picture, you see, this is what we can see from above. So when if you stand here, all you can see is this land which is either covered with grass or maybe only the soil or whatever. So below this you have the soil, the roots of the plants, they take water and everything from the moisture which is present in the soil. 
and as you go even more deep you actually reach a level below which you have sufficient water you see here below this level you can actually see a lot of water being present between the spaces in the spaces between the rocks so in this case in soil soil also contains water but it contains very little amount of water which is present in the form of moisture in the soil so the soil the spaces between the soil particles is very small and those small spaces are filled with small amount of water which makes the soil moist but once you reach this level so beyond this level when i say beyond this level means as you go even more deep from the water table you find that the ground is saturated with sufficient water very good amount of water is present so this is the level from where water table starts now this depth tells you how much deep you need to dig in order to get good amount of water now this is how this this concept of water table helps in construction of wells or tube wells now or boring because you want to fetch water from below the ground so you need to know that how deep you actually need to dig so this is the concept of water table now the depth of this water table changes from one place to another so how deep water table will be that is not constant now in some places it might be less deep in some places it it might be more deep so water table the the depth of the water table it changes from one place to another it also changes with season so the water table depth may vary due to seasonal changes like precipitation for example during rainy season there is heavy rainfall heavy precipitation so what will happen a lot of water is falling on the ground so the water lab water table might be higher so during rainy season water table might be higher that's because you have more water below the ground so obviously the water table will increase so it it is at it will be at a higher level whereas in case of summer seasons there is less rainfall and moreover yeah, all the water which is present on the soil that also tend to evaporate due to the hot sunny day so during summers the water table tend to be lower than the winter water table so you see here this is the winter water table and this is the summer water table so in winter the water table is higher because during winters the evaporation is less also let rainfall also happens but in summers they are mostly dry a uh, lot of evaporation also happens so as a result water table decreases so basically whether the water table is more or less that is decided by its height so you actually measure it from below so you see the winter water table this is the height and the summer water table this is the height so what do you see you see that the summer water table is at a lower level than the winter water table so in case of winter water table from here only you will have sufficient water present in summer summers from here you will have sufficient water present so that's the concept of water table now because of this the since the amount of water below the ground changes with seasons therefore the water table's depth also changes with seasons similarly from one place to another also the climatic conditions changes for example if you look at rajasthan so in in a state like rajasthan which is more dry and hot so the water table will be very much different from a place in the northeast india where there is too much of rainfall right so depending on uh, the climatic conditions the water table of that place is thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again